Hello everyone and welcome back. So in this video I'll share a few tips and tricks that are not so obvious, let's say, that I would like to share with you. So the first issue I have in this particular object is that in this extrude side, this part here, I have uh, a big chunk of UVs like this, a big strip and I would like to divide it into sections. So instead of splitting the geometry and do the UV separate, separately, we can do the following. We can take a group range and target as a base group that particular, those particular polygons and then we can select let's say two out of n primes and divide it by five let's say and as you can see the n primes in here if i just say n primes is taking all the primes from the object and not the primes on this base group so if you want to target that base group you want to use another expression which is n primes group and say it zero and the group is extrude size and then now it's targeting those that particular group and we can divide it by five and we get this pattern so this is quite useful because we can as you can see i have the same in here then i can promote it to edges group expand it and we have the seams that we can fit to a uv flatten and rectify it and then we end up with the uvs like this as you can see which is much much cleaner So for this one, I would like to show you how I did this, let's call it recursive cuts that I did with the clip node. So let's go through the setup. I have here a simple example that I will be sharing on Patreon, along with other example files that you will see in this video. So as you can see, I have the amount of iterations and a seed and more or less more or less mimics the same behavior of this one in here so this is actually pretty simple i have an initial mesh which is just one single primitive and then in here i am i am creating a a for each loop by using fetch feedback and by count so you can pick the amount of subdivisions you will have and i'm starting by measuring the area and promoting it to a max area so i can check the largest primitive then i'm grouping that largest primitive then in here I'm scattering a point somewhere in the middle of the, the largest primitive and I'm also randomizing the normals so I, I can have a random direction just by setting it to inside sphere and randomizing the normal and using the, the iteration as a seed, as a global seed plus uh, see that I have defined in this null and then in the clip nodes which is a, wh where everything happens I am clipping and setting the origin to the position of that specific point as you can see this point is in here the scatter point and so I'm using the position position x y and z and I, in the direction I'm using the normals as you can see normal X, Y and Z and this happens for an X amount of times 
and you all you always get this look of recursive subdivision let's say or recursive clip so it's actually pretty simple but that is not so obvious out of the box let's say so yeah that's how i did that and at the end i got something like this so as you can see in here i have uh, these uh, curves and i'm doing a poly bridge and i'm left with these uh, with the curves along the geometry and i would like to remove it so i can remove it with a blast and blast just the primitive zero and one but that might not be always the case and i can always uh, group them so I am grouping them here, so I'm grouping the curves, in here I just have one, but then when I copy, they, they will be in the same group, as you can see, curves. And I can just blast the curves after the bridge, but sometimes you might not have that luxury. So what we can see in here, in the poly bridge, if we go to the attributes or the geometry spreadsheet, and go to primitives and select intrinsics and closed you can see the primitive 0 and 1 which are the curves have uh, 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 an open attribute let's say or in the closed is set to 0 so what we can do is in an attribute wrangle remove those curves by using this if prim intrinsic closed prim num is equal to 0 we can remove those prims, so that's how, how you can remove leftover curves from the geometry. And this particular suggestion came from Fenolis on Discord, so thank you a lot for that. Okay, for this particular digital asset, which is pretty simple, just takes an image and resizes a plane to fit the the same resolution while keeping it in the 0 to 1 range. So this is actually, the way I'm doing this is pretty simple. Basically I'm reading an image in a copnet, then in the grid I am taking as the X size the res, which is the resolution of the, the copnet and taking the X resolution, so the width, and multiplied by 1 divided by the X resolution. So the, the, the second part just helps, helps me to keep the, the ratio of 0 to 1. And then for the Y, it's just the same thing, but the, in this case the Y res, and multiplied by 1 divided by the X resolution, or the width, so the height and width. And this way we can get the same ratio of uh, an image taken from the copnet. You only, ca you only can do it through a copnet, so to, to read the resolution you can't uh, really read it in a uh, UV quick shade or attribute from map. So yeah. So in here I'm creating this pillow effect. And for that I am welding two pieces of cloth that are almost touching each other. They are actually touching on the unshared edges. So I'm welding those unshared edges as you can see unshared back and unshared front and i'm configuring uh, i am using a configure balloon in the first place but if i set it to the default settings which is from connectivity and i test it now You can see the result is quite different. It goes all over the place and even can crush your audio session. So let's just wait another frame. 
and as you can see this is all messed up let me cancel this and the reason is when you have two pieces of clothes and they are not in the origin this can cause you a lot of issues so what you can do is say Odini that these two pieces of cloth are part of the same the same uh, piece let's say so what you can do is just use an i at class equals to one just say that they have the same class as you can see instead of two and in the volume pressure just set when you say define pieces instead of from connectivity just use from attributes and specify the class attribute and then when you simulate it you will have a more predictable result as you can see it's not exploding all over the place like before so yeah guys that's basically what i wanted to share today hopefully you picked up a few tips don't forget you can always grab sample files from my patreon along with exclusive tutorials and yeah see you next time thank you